Hey, Mike, guess what? What? Mike, raging rivers, hungry bears, drastic avalanches, roaring seas. No matter how prepared you are, a walk in the woods can go from innocent to disaster in the blink of an eye. Yeah. When pushed to their breaking point, humans are capable of astonishing things, things that you had never thought of possible. Yeah. Listen to In the Wild as they explore the most heroic, terrifying, and phenomenal stories of real people who survived the unsurvivable. Learn what went wrong, what went right, and how you can make it out alive if the worst case ever happened to you. In the Wild podcast reviews on Apple include Love Your Podcast from Laura. It's scary how relentless nature can be. I always enjoy this podcast at work. It keeps me on the edge of my seat. Or how about we go with Hiker 0001. Uh, Good stories and good narration. I like when there are sound effects that add to the ambience of the story. In the Wild podcast on Apple Podcasts and everywhere you get your podcast downloads. Broadcasting across the nation from the East Coast to the West. Keeping you up to date on technology while enjoying a little whiskey on the side. With leading edge topics along with special guests to navigate technology in a segmented stylized radio program. The information that will make you go hmm. Pull up a seat, raise a glass with our hosts as we spend the next hour talking about technology for the common person. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. Welcome to Tech Time with Nathan Mum, the show that makes you go, hmm, technology news of the week, the show for the everyday person talking about technology, broadcasting across the nation with insightful segments on subjects weeks ahead of the mainstream media. We welcome our radio audience of 35 million listeners to an hour of insightful technology news. Each week, our shows cover the weekly top technology subjects without a political agenda. We verify the facts, and we do it with a sense of humor in less than 60 minutes. And, of course, with a little whiskey on the side. I'm Nathan Mum. Welcome to our show today. We live streamed here on our show on five of the most popular platforms, including YouTube, Twitch.tv, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. We encourage you to watch us live, or you can always visit us online at techtimeradio.com. Tweet us during the show at hashtag techtimeradio, and we'll do our best to respond to your tweets on the air. If you enjoy the show, make sure to give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or whatever podcast service you may be using. I'm your host, the technology expert with 30 years of technology expertise working for Fortune 500 companies. Across the country, my co-host here, Mike Roday, is an award-winning author originally from Arizona. Mike's a human behavior expert living in the Seattle area with a master's degree in forensic psychology. Mike's here to keep me from geeking out while providing insightful information into human behavior and how it interacts with technology. We also have our guest, Mark Gregoire, who will be here for our whiskey tasting moments. We'll be having him. And we have our special guest, Nick Espinosa, joining the show today. So it's going to be a packed show. Again, we are two friends, Mike and I, from different backgrounds, but we bring the te- best technology show possible every week for our family, friends, and fans to enjoy. Welcome, everyone. Let's start today's show. Now on today's show... Today on Tech Time with Nathan Mum, Amazon employees can now put their company shares down towards a payment on a new home. This is breaking news. This is this is something we're going to be talking about in our top story, so I don't want to ruin it, but this is kind of amazing news to be talking about. First in the industry to have this, and so there's some pitfalls that I would be very, very scared about personally, but that's okay. All right. Then we have iSpace plans to land on the moon at the end of April, and iSpace is trying to essentially commercialize and create business opportunities for space travel. Mike has that subject. And where is Generation Z getting the news? Well, of course, they're getting it from Tech Time Radio. But besides Tech Time Radio, where is their place that they're getting it? We actually have analysis of all the generations, where they're getting the news from, and we're going to be talking about each of those. And then we have our expert, Nick Espinosa. We're going to be talking about LastPass, a security company that is priding themselves in being able to keep your computer secure They haven't been hacked only once, but maybe twice, but three times in this month span. He's going to be talking about that. Then we're going to also be talking about Dish Network. Do you have Dish Network? Do you know what Dish Network is, right? Yeah. So Dish Network, do you know that it is down right now? All their online services, it's been down now since Thursday. So if you're trying to get your HBO Max service from Dish, 
forget it. If you're trying to get into your Dish Anywhere software, their big software that they talk about where I can watch a channel anywhere, best of luck. Thank goodness I'm a DirecTV user because if I was a Dish user right now, I would not be happy. So we'll be talking about I that. Know. We can have that in our throw and go society. Uh, oh, and then and News Corp. We're going to be talking about how News Corp, the organization, has been exposed for over two years with a compromise. So Nick's got all that great information. And finally, do you know when the first color TV went on sale? We're going to be talking about that and other details on so much more. In addition, of course, we have our standard features, including Mike's mesmerizing moment this week in technology and a possible Nathan Nugget. As always, we have our pick of the day whiskey tasting during the commercials to see if our selected whiskey pick of the day gets zero, one, or two thumbs up at the end of the show. So sit back, raise a glass, and welcome to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. Now it's time for the latest headlines in the world of technology. Here are our top technology stories of the week. All right. Amazon employees can now put their company shares towards a down payment on a home, allowing a workforce to pay large amounts of cash without actually selling the stock and flexibility. We're going to go right now to Kathy Wilders from the New York Stock Exchange for this breaking story. Amazon.com Incorporated employees will soon be able to use their company shares as collateral when buying homes under an arrangement with online mortgage lender Better.com. A new Better.com product, Equity Unlocker, will allow employees to pledge stock for loans for down payments, the company said, rather than having to sell the stock to raise cash. Okay, so do you get so instead of selling money for a down payment on your house? Yeah, this is essentially putting a lien on your Amazon stock. It's putting a lien on your Amazon stock for current employees, past employees, and it allows you to have this shares of stock. So let's say I have a six year, seven year vesting, right? And I'm only on year one of the company itself. It will be able to take the seven year vesting of total shares that I have available to purchase that as the down payment option without me having to pay any money, coming up with any down payment for a home itself, and then be able to have the house payment for these houses that are considered my weekly and monthly salary for the determination on loan. Now, what's really interesting is this does not come with the prime rate mortgage number, which is essentially a number. It's like 7.9% currently right now in our economy. It, what they do is they add additional points for the service. Now, this is coming from Better.com. Better.com was the company that laid off like 50% of its employees uh, in a Zoom meeting last year. We actually talked about that on, when they're, all these technology companies were doing this. But essentially, Better.com is going to protect itself against Amazon's declining share value by coming up with a seven-year average of how much the stock is worth, how much it's been increased, to make that guesstimate on when you decide to purchase a house itself. So do you know, so you know what this is going to do? This is essentially, I, I got a call from uh, Mindy, my real estate person. Thank you for calling me this morning. Essentially, this is going to move the house values up in the Pacific Northwest area or any major area where Amazon has employees. Mm -hmm. In the house values, they will probably be able to, a standard person dropping off your packages will be able now to apply for a loan and most likely get a million dollar loan vestiture of having that yeah, what house. better way of ruining a local economy than driving up all the... If you're, a, if, if you're, let's say you're more of a, a white collar employee, then you're going to immediately qualify for a two million dollar home. You, you tell me that the prices. I mean, this is this is essentially what they're saying right. is this could make a gold mine. It could put the Pacific Northwest into the regional cost areas of the same prices that people pay for houses down in California right now. Yeah, and then the next thing you know, everybody will be leaving Washington to get out of the high the high economic cost of living well, like, this is, like they are in California. So it's called an equity unlocker. It's a part of the new equity compensation as a particular concern that will entice Amazon employees. Essentially, this is like a seven-year noose that sticks around an employee. If you got a loan for a house here, it, it, what happens if they decide to lay you off? I don't really know. Uh, yeah, I don't really know that that's such a good, a good deal for an Amazon employee considering how much turnover and layoffs they go through. Well... That, that, so what happens if this then now moves to Microsoft? If this then moves know. to other people? Monkey that see, give, monkey do. You oh, know. my word. So this is the time. I, I, I need to buy another 20, so who, 20 houses right now. Who, and, is this, who is this really benefiting? Who, 
who benefits the most out of this? Better.com, Amazon, Amazon employees, the local economy. Who who does this really affect the best in monetary? Who terms? does this help out? Well, it doesn't and help out. It helps gets, out the homeowners. The homeowners it, that own it, that owns a home right now that wants to sell and leave. Right. So it's, it's the yeah, they drive, that, they drive up the prices of the houses in your neighborhood. Yep. So you get to sell your house, which increase, which creates the problem with housing that we have right now. It just exacerbates that problem. So my my question is, who gets the most money out of this arrangement? What I think it does is I think Amazon then locks in keeping their employees with probably not giving them high pay increases to go to Microsoft and other competitive companies across the pond mm-hmm. in the Pacific Northwest so that they have to stay there because their home loan is attached to their salary and their potential stocks that they have available. Wow. It's even more corporate feudalism. Yeah, there you go. Awesome. Right. Okay, story number two, Mike. I'm sure this will make you happy. I don't, why would it make me happy? Well, I don't know. At least it's not talking about this, the corporate. Uh, okay, well, it, <laughs> okay. So a Tokyo-based company called iSpace yeah. uh, is planning to land on the moon at the end of April. Okay. Uh, it's Hakuto R lunar lander is on track to reach the moon next month. Are we in March yet? We're not uh, in no, March. We're, yet. we're in okay. February, April. Yeah. So after tomorrow, I can say next month. Okay, there you go. Uh, iSpace CEO Takashi Hakamata said during a media briefing Monday that the flight has provided operational data that will inform subsequent missions, which there are two. Uh, scheduled. We have acquired tons of data and know-how on the lander and its subsystems, and they are very viable assets for iSpace. This includes information on the lander's structural performance during launch and deployment, as well as the performance of uh, thermal communication and power subsystems. I just lost my script. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, they, uh, so, at any rate, so the company has two more missions yes, planned. Yes, the company right? have two more missions planned uh, with the awesome minimalist titles of Mission Two and Mission Three. Okay, uh, scheduled for twenty twenty four and twenty twenty five, respectively. Uh, Mission Two will be the next technical demonstration of the Hakuto Hakuto R lander system, and also a test of an ice base micro rover, which will collect data on the lunar surface. Uh, iSpace's eventual aim is to kickstart the lunar economy, largely through resource exploration and extraction. Both the lander and rover will be important information gathering resources as the company plans for future missions. So uh, while we're fighting over uh, virtual space in the metaverse, Japan is taking over the moon and they're going to sell condos. They're going to they're actually going to make it commercialized. That's their whole idea is to go on up there into actually Well, you know, hey, why not? Maybe 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 Amazon employees can apply their and, their and buy a house up in space. Yeah, there, there you go. go. I mean, you've already you've already talked about owning a cubic foot of the moon. Uh, you know, and also a, a place so that in uh, Scotland so I can be a lord, right? Isn't That's that right. That's right. Okay. All well, right. Might as well might as well just blend it all together. So essentially, though, Tokyo, what's really nice about this is they're actually trying to monetize the moon. So United States missed out on this opportunity. Russia, I, I, everybody I don't, else I don't has know missed why out. that's a nice thing. Well, why is that a nice thing? Uh, well, I'm glad that somebody, there's a planet out there we can actually get to with, without huge, I don't know why we're so in love with going to Saturn and to going to Mars and all these other places that we just want to send everybody to, right? So we, well, we, we have these fascinations. There's a planet available to us. Why don't we go and see what we can do on that planet, see what we can do for a sustainable life, see what we can do and actually uh, utilize that. Yeah, according to this, it's not about it's not about creating colonies on the moon. It's about uh, extracting resources. Yeah, I, but, but this is their first spot. This is so, where ice space is going to be the big boy. You know, in any, in any type of space travel in the future, uh, a a moon base is is probably one of the key points in expanding our. What if you want to f- just think they could put a couple of exons up there and they can every single time the the spacecraft comes by they need to refuel before they come yeah there you go Earth. yeah they they'll have they have charger ports for your Tesla well, there you go okay all right well story number three TikTok really is becoming Gen Z's Google Google search 
is the go-to news discovery platform for the U.S. adults. But that's less for a case on Gen Zers, who prefer TikTok and Instagram more than the older generations. In February, a survey conducted 14% of Gen Z adults reported using TikTok to start researching a major news event, significantly higher than the share of adults at 2% saying the same time a year ago. Publishers' path to researching Gen Zers has become notably less straightforward. Well, before search giants announced plans to integrate artificial intelligence like ChatGPT and Bored or whatever the heck. Uh, Bored? Baird or Bard Bored. or whatever the heck Google's going to do. Uh, <laughs> Google has acknowledged that they have become a less favorable search platform for Gen Zers. With no flash in the pan, the latest morning consult data shows that the shares of Gen Z's adults who started searching for major new events on Google search is lower than that of the general population. A significant slice of Gen Z adults is instead heading to the platform TikTok for all of its news. Yeah, well, that makes sense. What's well, interesting, though, so I have a chart here in front of us, right? So I, mm-hmm. I, I have a chart. And do you realize, and so this is broken apart, all adults, Gen Zers, Millennials, Gen Xers, and Baby Boomers. Baby Boomers, Gen Xers, and Millennials all use Google search by over 50% to start their searches. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, when you take a look at Gen Z adults for Google search, it's under 40%. And then you go to TikTok, as it's taken a look at TikTok. Gen Z adults are at 14% of that, and YouTube's at 13%. So Gen Zers are finding their information less on Google, which is probably a good thing. And they're why? now, though— Again, why? Finding, well, because I, I, I'm, I'm a Bing search person, so I'm oh. a, a Bing search. Oh, okay. Okay, so, yeah, okay. you're just— you're just uh, That was just a little dig on, on little... Google search. All right, so TikTok and YouTube are the number one and two platforms that Gen Zers use. That make, well, that makes sense. It's That's interesting, it. though. What, so what, what, what are we? We're considered Gen Xers, right? Yes. Okay. So, as a Gen Xer, where do you normally get your news information besides a Google search? Uh, do you get it from YouTube, news? Twitter, Instagram, or a news publisher's website? Where do you where Where do you get yours? Uh, news publisher's web- website. Okay, so that's interesting because Gen Xers are at about ten percent of where they go to the publisher's website to actually find out the information. So, right. CNN. CNBC, correct. Wh- whatever you need to do to find that. And what's interesting though is Facebook is the leader by only one generation, and that is the millennial generation. Yes. More millennials get their news right now off of Facebook. That's because Facebook than any place else. Facebook is a keystone of of the millennial generation, and w- and we as humans we stick to what we know. We stick to what we we enjoy and we are used to. Okay. It doesn't. It makes sense that G- Gen Zers would be more attuned to something like TikTok, which which is a very patterned after quick sound bites of information, and that's that's part and parcel to their generation. It also came out. Most recently for them. For them. Oh, do you, got, them. you got a comment on this? Yeah. I just want to say that like with a publisher or, you know, a big news corporation, it takes hours to get information out versus with TikTok, you're hearing it right from the source. Um, so like with the whole Black Lives Matter movement, you were there on the front lines with whoever was streaming onto Twitter or TikTok. And then, the you know, the January 6th riots, like anything that's going on, you're hearing straight from either the person that's down there fighting the fight or, you know, news trying to get into the Gen Z as well on TikTok. So, you're, so, you, so if you needed your news source, you go to the, are you saying that you go to TikTok to look for it? Yeah, most likely. So TikTok is influencing our younger generation. Yeah. And What's interesting, That though, might be a problem. Well, what's well, interesting is because Gen Xers and uh, baby boomers are also transitioning to TikTok, and I have watched it too, to get their news from there also. So yeah. you've got this new gap, and then you have these real old peoples, and, and we're all starting to kind of get our information from TikTok. Yeah. Mm. The yeah. one thing I do like about TikTok is that it's it feels more like it's from the source and not it doesn't go have to go through the editor and then the person that wrote it and then the person that's actually publishing it onto the site. Like you're given news of what's going on right then and there. Well, but how do you put that news into context? Well, 
What do you mean by into context? How do you make sure that that's how do you valid make sure news that the that's news that you're news. getting is is? I mean, well, this is a problem so with all somebody, of us. If but. somebody, you know, if let's say I don't know, some guy from the New York Post says something outrageous about New York, somebody else that's living in New York will all can also rebuttal that in person and give their side of the story because you know you're showing it all with a camera. None of it's just voiceover work. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. So then it, it's constantly it, it appe- being it's it appeals constantly being it appeals updated. it appeals to that I need that information right now and here it is. You hear that yeah. sound right now? And that's Nick Espinosa screaming. <laughs> what the heck is going on with TikTok? That's what we got. So we're yeah, we're well, queuing him know, up. Okay. Well, that I, I ends. I don't our... think he's far off the mark there. <laughs> Top technology stories of the week. Moving on, we're gonna have our major disruptions going on on the cyber attacks. Across the world, we have Nick Espinoza, our guest uh, for Ask the Expert. He's going to be talking about a bunch of items that is going on that we are going to ask him questions. And we may have some time to even talk a little TikTok versus Meta. Well, who is worse out there for privacy? Oh, so I have my opinion. I don't know if there's a Nick, worse. I don't know. Is this the lesser of two evils type well, of conversation? It, it, it may be. It may be. You're listening to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. We'll be right back after these commercials. Hey, Mike, I'm looking for some help writing our blog post for Tech Time Radio. Uh, Well, you should try Phosphor AI. It's an online service that will save you hours of work with your content creation. Simply type in your title and their AI software will get to work writing a high quality original article for you. You'll need to review the article and take 15 to 20 minutes to make necessary edits before publishing. But you'll get free articles just for signing up so you can try out the service and see how it works for you. How many articles do I get free? I, I already said you get three free articles. You should listen when I'm talking to you. Phosphor AI pricing is very reasonable for the quality of content that you'll get. Why waste time writing the content yourself when you get Phosphor AI to do it for you? Visit them online today at Phosphor AI. Again, that's P H O S P H O R A I dot com. Uh, welcome back to Tech Time with Nathan. Um, Tech Time is a weekly hour technology show that talks about current technology in a simple format without having to geek out. Brought to you by myself, Nathan Mum, and Mike Roday. We just had our first whiskey tasting during the break, and now we have Mark in studio to tell us what we are tasting today. Mark, tell us a little bit about our whiskey. This is Whistle Pig Piggyback Rye. Okay. So it's uh, Undisclosed Canadian Distillery or Distilleries. It's a rye whiskey, <laughs> six years old, at 96.56 proof, and it's 100% rye. Mm-hmm. And you can pick this up for close to $50. Yep. Okay. Tell us 100% rye. Oh, yeah. I'm sure Mike can. So what did you think of it so far, Mike? Well, the finish is nice, but I couldn't really tell anything up until the finish because the burn is so hard and fast and long. Well, you know, Whistle Pig's website kind of talks to you about this, Mike. You want to hear what they have to say? Yeah, sure. What they say. All right. They think they said they think anything worth doing is worth doing one hundred percent. Our rye is aged for six years, taught us that it doesn't take long to arrive at perfection. With mash bill of one hundred percent rye to capture one hundred percent bold spice flavor profile. Yeah, it is bold and spicy. On the nose, you get some fresh cinnamon and ground black pepper with subtle citrus and a grapefruit zest. The palate is a powerfully spice with accents of cocoa, cardamom, and treated leather. The finish is intense and lingering with notes of vanilla, citrus, and baking spice. Yes, I always enjoy leather in my whiskey. So I, I, I have had Whistle Pig before. We I we've done we've Whistle done Whistle Pig, Pig. and, and not you know this they're, one, they're, but... they're 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 not this one, but there's people that like this. And yeah, this is. I, I don't I, think I liked it the last time we had. Well, I, I've never liked Whistle Pig. So when I, I'll go to a, a place and somebody will say, Oh, you like whiskey? And I'm like, Yeah, I like whiskey. And they'll be like, The two that they open up, uh, Oh, well, I have Woodenville. They'll be like, Oh, that stuff is like car oil, but okay. And then they got Whistle Pig. And then both of those, I'm like, Yeah, thank you very much. And then nice. that, that's music to my ears because I was looking at your track record. You guys gave two thumbs up the last four weeks, over a month. And so I had to bring something that. <laughs> Give me a little punch. You need to challenge my That's palate. That's right. Oh, I can't. Well, so like can't. I said, the finish is very nice, though, so I I may give it a thumbs up. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, we'll have to see what I say later about it, Mike. Okay. 
All right. With our first whiskey tasting completed for the show on, now we have our technology expert, Nick Espinoza. He'll be joining the show. He's an expert in cybersecurity and network infrastructure. Nick Espinoza has consulted with clients ranging from small business to the Fortune 100 level. In 1998, at age 19, Nick founded Windy City Networks, later acquired in 2015. He then created Security Fanatics, where he is the chief security fanatic. Let's welcome Nick to our video stream to start our next segment. Welcome to the segment we call Ask the Experts. With our Tech Time Radio expert, Nick Espinoza. All right, Nick, how are you doing today? Are you Hi, Nick. Good. And so if you like Whistle Pig, I don't know if you've ever tried Humming Swine. It tastes like a pig's chuckle, but it's 10 bucks a bottle, and it'll do you right. So, okay, okay, there you go. There, there you go. If I'm, this shows up on the show next week, I'm walking out. Are you? Uh, <laughs> well, so I'll just tell you, I went shopping this weekend for some whiskeys, and I went way over what I normally do. I'm normally at the $29, $30. Yes, I know. You I usually spent go 60, for the cheap stuff. I went for some $60 and $50 bottles that were some very high end, so we're going to have to taste those in the upcoming okay. weeks. And see. Right. Now, Good Nick man. is going to be saying, Nathan, you keep on asking me for my address, and you never send me whiskey. That's because I had to figure out how to ship whiskey Across after we, after the United States uh, because it's just not easy to do. So no, actually, it's not. so you're going to be receiving some packages, Nick, here coming that say that they're fluorescent lights and they're packaged, taken care of, and that will help you uh, uh, get the items that I have sent to you. You, so you just you. outed Thank yourself. You know. Well, fluorescent lights work much easier than trying to do the rest of that. Okay. So, okay. All right. Well, there you all go. right. There you go. Well. Let's get right into this. Good grief, Nick. We have LastPass. Uh, so this is a company that is supposed to literally keep people's information safe. There's, this is your your thing. I have LastPass. Well, you, you, I've, I've now moved over to every key. Well, so I know, for but, about, but before oh every key came along, you were like LastPass, 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 LastPass. I was. And then they it was free, and it didn't get breached very often. And then all of a sudden, they started charging <laughs> you for it. And you see how I said that? It didn't get breached often. <laughs> very often, very often. <laughs> and so, so what is going on with this company that essentially tries to protect your passwords from everybody else? Give us a breakdown of what is going on with this company oh my god i there's not enough scotch in scotland all right so um <laughs> first things first first things first we now know uh back in august what they meant when they said they had a zero knowledge approach to security because they have zero knowledge of actual security <laughs> that that's what it is and and we couldn't figure that out but here's the latest going on they got hit in august it was a huge disaster I said, you know, they're not being transparent about this. This is this is going to be a big issue. And then they re-upped it in December and said, well, OK, we weren't completely, you know, forward in August, uh, you know, but we had we had customer data actually stolen. And now here's what's going on, because they just released this yesterday. And according to a person who was actually briefed on the private report that last has had internally spoke the press on the condition of anonymity. Uh, essentially, a employee at his home got hit, as I mentioned, um, but they got hit through Plex, which is very interesting because Plex is basically like a media streaming kind of platform. You can install Plex onto a computer and run your own Plex server for like audio, video games, all those kinds of things. This was a senior DevOps engineer, meaning this individual had very sensitive access and LastPass was letting this dude work from his home computer. And so when his Plex server got compromised, because Plex had a massive data breach, if you didn't know, yep, about yep. 30 million usernames and passwords got dumped back in the day. I remember reporting on that one myself. They essentially then were able to gain access. And because there were two different types of methodology here, LastPass didn't realize initially that it was the same attacker that essentially was in both systems. And so LastPass was essentially letting one of their employees work from a home computer and they are one of the largest password manager companies in the world. I mean, this shows us that they have just a huge lack of internal controls when it comes to like actually just letting employees work from home. I mean, heck, even like in my home network, I'm sitting right here. My computers that I use for work are physically isolated from my smart TVs, my other stuff. If one of if my Plex server gets hit and I don't have Plex, but if I did, it wouldn't affect my work stuff. These are very simple, straightforward things that any company should have, but especially one that basically touts themselves as the last password you will ever need. If you're still on this, why? 
Yeah, you know, yeah, you need to you need you know, to jump why? off. You need to jump off right now. Did you jump I, off? I, I, yeah, okay. I, I, I have jumped off, so I, I do not use them. What what an absolute! It's always interesting. What to, a, it's like FireEye and the security company. I'm going to get in trouble. I'm going to get hacked gonna, now. I, I think All we right, should we probably so I, jump off of that and back on. But the but it's like these people that say they're experts. If you say you're an expert at something and you're a password manager company and you're the yes. expert password manager company, you better freaking actually be able to back up your information yes. with stuff that you have there to say that you actually have but, password but, security yeah, as but, an issue but, for your oh, company. But no matter how expert anybody is, so you're gonna have somebody, they can't overcome human nature. They home. cannot oh, do oh, it. So he should have oh, been on a VPN. So first oh, of all, he should have been on a private VPN if he's a, working on a security oh. company. His Plex server should be on a completely sure. different IP range. That's the problem. Network. Here's the networking guy. Man. I'm he's just like, going, oh, I got yeah. this. So uh, so yeah, if you try Mike. to hack into my house, you can, you're can you going to be able to get into one of my computers. You're not going to be able to get the other six or seven. Now, there's no way because I have security in place. Yeah. I'm supposed yeah. to have that uh-huh. in place. So you get one and that's it. What, one and, and done. And, you better choose the right one Mike, f- first. Mike, Mike, to your point, human error is always a factor. But when you're looking at an organization that is allowing uh, or, or essentially dictating how their employees can work with their data, you put policies and procedures and guidelines in place to ensure that things like this don't happen. And if this person is violating the policy, then you say they're violating the policy. Yeah. But but I would never, if I if I were... CEO of LastPass, I would be absolutely high to let my computer, my, my employees work from home computers. I'd be giving them laptops with isolating software, all yep. of that, because I can't dictate how their home computers are going to be. And there are going to be strict policies and procedures that they sign off on. You're not going to let Junior use a laptop to do God knows what at two in the morning and get yourself infected. Right, You're going to do right. everything you can to mitigate this. And they didn't have any of that. That's what kills me through this whole thing. <laughs> It's yeah. nuts. It's yeah. absolutely If you nuts. have last that's pass the, right that's now. The chaos, that's just the chaos of working with humans. Okay. Well, I mean, guess that's what? That's why I bag on this but stuff all the time. It doesn't get any better. How, let me, let me uh, look, Mike, have you ever heard of these companies? How about the Times, the Dow Jones, the Wall Street Journal, the Sun, the Herald uh, Sun, and Harper Collins? No, I get all my news from TikTok. I don't know any of those. <laughs> okay. So let's just talk about these brands. Brainy. These are all brands from News Corp. Yes. All right. And, and so what has happened to News Corp here, Nick? Can you give us a little update? Yeah. Well, first things first, don't forget their flagship Fox News. OK. OK. Yeah. Also, there you go. OK. Also a News Corp property. Yeah. So here's here's what's going on with this. And this is absolutely nuts because News Corp basically said that attackers um, hit them in around and, and gain gain access to their systems in February of 2020. Right. Two <laughs> plus years later in 2022, they disclosed a breach. Now, to to get you know outside of like all the personal information they stole or they had access to obviously when you're breaking into publishers and news sources you may be able to get things like internal emails bet- you know between uh, government officials and reporters or secret sources and reporters and all this kind of stuff and so when this came to light Nathan they hired your favorite security outfit Mandy and FireEye to actually go through this and this is what Mandiant said, and I quote, Mandiant assesses that those behind this activity have a China nexus, and we believe they are likely involved in espionage activities to collect intelligence to benefit China's interests. And so that's awesome when you're looking at literally like what you just said. I mean, the Dow Jones, for God's sakes, uh, you know, the the Times, the Wall, Wall Street, Street Journal. Journal. I mean, these cetera, are big publications. Yeah. These are these are major tier dead. one sources. I mean, don't get me wrong. They don't stand up to the amazingness of the on the ground TikTok reporter, but, <laughs> but they are doing a pretty good job in and of their own right. So, so, so this is absolutely damaging potentially to the entire journalism standard. Um, you know, I'm forget politics, just the journalism standard here in the United States. If this actually was as Mandy and FireEye says, the work of possibly the Chinese intelligence. And so that's a huge problem. This is, this is I think, an unfolding story that hopefully we're going to get more on. It's absolutely crazy. But, but, well, but, but I, I, can, crazy. I can, I can, I can, start, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, no, 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 wait a and minute. And you're paying a, a security company like FireEye. Well, that's, companies that's what to, I was to, waiting to for. To watch this, this stuff. And it, it takes you now almost three years. We're in February of 2023 yeah. to get the information. Right, what but, the heck? Well, no, no. So so that doesn't necessarily surprise me. 
only in the sense that we have seen consistently, and, and for the record, News Corp, to be fair, News Corp is not the only one, but when you have an ATP or an advanced persistent threat, APT, in your network, oftentimes, even if you've got excellent threat detection systems, they go undetected for months, possibly years. I mean, Solar Winds was a perfect example. Russian intelligence got in. They basically piggybacked right off of um, Solar Winds' proprietary protocol known as OIP, and nobody caught them because everybody essentially was dropping or, or, or allowing any solar winds traffic through. And so, so when this is caught, it's usually something screws up or uh, they uh, add a layer of security or something more sophisticated and threat detection comes online and sees something that wasn't previously there. So, so this doesn't surprise me in that sense, but nevertheless, it's damaging because what they've caught may not necessarily be everything in the network. If they didn't mention in any article that I've read about this when I was looking this up back on Sunday um, about, like, let's say Fox News, for example, which again is a News Corp property. Were they in Fox News as well? <laughs> you know, like, like and not to mention like all the other outlets. I mean, just a handful of the zillions of things they own worldwide. And so how far does this go? I think we're going to see more, more going on here. I, I really do. All right, so now we're going to go on to the subject that uh, we're excited about here a little yay. bit. All right, so we're going to talk about your favorite tool, TikTok. <laughs> All right. So you heard the article that we had. Uh, Gen Zers are just going to TikTok to get their news and information. So now oh I I know that you dislike TikTok a lot, right? I mean, with, no, a, with a passion. I, I get that. So my <laughs> my question to you on the kind of a, a point counterpoint, is TikTok worse than Meta? Because I actually, so here's my point of view, and then I can hear your point of view. And then Mike's going to ask us maybe a couple questions here and there as we sure. argue. Sure. I think Meta is is twice as worse than anything that TikTok has available. TikTok, and, and I'll, I'll kind of open my little statement here, is TikTok at least lets you know that all the information you do on their platform will be sold to third parties. They do sell it. They at least publish all of their information that essentially says, if you're using my system, we're going to sell every single thing we can do about you. TikTok sure. does publish that they keep all the American information on American servers, which I actually believe that that is true. It doesn't mean that I don't. You, I disagree. OK, they, you disagree on that? Okay. Absolutely. They, they came out and publicly stated that they replicate. And for the record, they're on Oracle infrastructure. I've done my homework on this one okay. for years at this point. OK, um, they, they are in the in North America. They are on um, Oracle's cloud. Okay. So they're not using Amazon or, or Microsoft. They have publicly stated that they replicate all data for backup purposes to Singapore. Singapore, okay. Now, yep. on top of that, we don't know 100% what access or who has access to that, but actual tapes of internal conversations that American TikTok employees have had have basically said that, one, they have to call like some boss or manager in China to gain access to specific things, indicating that China has access. On top of that, there are multiple Chinese employees of TikTok and their, their parent, uh, ByteDance and Douyin, that, that also have simultaneously worked for either Chinese state-owned media or the Chinese government itself. This is what we are talking about here. So this is the biggest issue. My biggest issue with TikTok and news delivery is that we already know TikTok manipulates their artificial intelligence to make things go viral. I literally did that as a daily podcast, like I want to say like a week or two ago. Um, and so we know that, like, let's say the Chinese government decides that they want to make a happy, sunny, all day party, all the time, fun time news article about what life in Taiwan would be under their rule. Now, here's the problem. They make that go viral and you've got essentially the 18 to 29 year old demographic that overwhelmingly is using this. The others are shifting. But Pew showed us in October of last year that 18 to 29 still drive TikTok, you've got an influence there that is only showing you one side of the story. Right, in the same which is way that I... when you were talking, hold on. In the same way that you were talking about earlier, when Odie was saying, "Oh, well, yeah. you know, somebody can be on the street on January 6th, that is the perfect example of what I'm talking about. Because if you look at videos from one side of that building in the Capitol to the other side, one side looks a hell of a lot more peaceful than the damage and and just destruction that was happening on the other side. So we have to have a 10,000 foot view when we are talking about these things. And that is something when you've got algorithms that will force things on you at the behest of a government, that is a very serious issue. And we have known about this for years. This isn't going away. Facebook, I've got serious issues with, but we have legal recourse in this country to go after Facebook and go after them we have here and in Europe. That is something we cannot do. Try suing a company in China. 
forget it. Absolutely forget it. This is why governments are banning it. Okay, so so okay, so let me ask you this. So TikTok has their platform right now, which they mm-hmm. have, but you got Meta and, and Facebook that have completely yep. essentially Facebook's given up on Facebook. The 2D version that you have of Facebook. Mm-hmm. There's a reason that Zuckerberg is going all in on the metaverse, because if he can mm-hmm. own the metaverse, then there are no rules. There is no United States legislation. There is a whole subset of rules that he can create himself where he can track privacy on your face. He can track privacy yeah. on what you're doing. They he, can, are. He, he can he can decide to promote a, a brand like, let's say, Nike, and they de- but decide to buy real estate in his environment, yeah. and he wants to sell Nike shoes to all the virtual people and, and all this. Essentially, he can become like this godlike person, which is way worse than my mind than what we have currently. And in, in this is where I'm going to go to yeah. in this TikTok world, where at least it's still the 2D videos that I'm going through, and I can get right. that on Instagram Reels, I can get that on uh, YouTube Shorts. So yeah, I mean, I, not, I can do these. Yeah. What about yeah. the levels of popularity you're talking about? TikTok, but privacy. TikTok there is, is no privacy. TikTok in TikTok is now. Re- well, yeah, but TikTok privacy, is reaching though. a popularity of billions of people, right? Yep. Uh, Metaverse is having trouble with that particular. Yeah, I've, I've been in the metaverse. It's boring. Okay. That, now, now, the, and hopefully it gets better if you're into that thing. But I will leave you with this thought on this. Okay. I think before TikTok even existed, before it was musically, all that kind of stuff, Facebook showed us just how dangerous it is to get information delivered from non trusted sources. Okay. Yep. Facebook proved that going online and using a social media collaborative network to gather information that is reliable is inconsistent at best. Mm -hmm. And and I think that is the lesson that we have to take to all of these. There's a reason why there's journalistic standards at reporting organizations. And while they may be slower, they tend to be vastly more accurate and vastly more complete. Uh, I have to agree with that. Okay. I agree with you on that. All right. Well, this is our first little counterpoint. I, I, I like this, Nick. I think I think we can do lots of episodes with different topics where me and you can, can go back and forth. So thank you so much for joining us. I will tell you that you are having some fluorescent lights that are being shipped your way. So uh, <laughs> make sure you take a look for those coming on in for right you. On. And we will hopefully get you on in the next couple of weeks again and, and have you back to talk more cybersecurity. All right. Thank you. Nick, much. how, how can I find out more information about you? Where, where can oh, I find yeah, you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, share, follow me on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP or subscribe to me at YouTube as well. All right. Great. Thank you very All much. All right. Bye, Nick. That ends Thanks, our guys. Ask the Expert with Dick Espinosa. Up next, we have This Week in Technology. And we still, of course, have our Mike's Mesmerizing Moment and our Whiskey Tastings. We'll see you after the commercial break. This is Mark and Greg for Copiers Northwest with a terrific offer called Printer Care Plus. It's simple. Buy HP printer cartridges from Copiers Northwest and we'll service your current printers for free. That sounds too good to be true. It's made possible due to our HP Copiers Northwest relationship. Copiers Northwest is an HP Platinum partner. One of only two in the entire Northwest. And now with Printer Care Plus, Copiers Northwest will provide free printer service as long as they purchase genuine HP cartridges from Copiers Northwest. That's right. IT departments no longer have to service printers. Or fix paper jams with Printer Care Plus. They can focus on more strategic initiatives. And let our experienced technicians keep their HP printers up and running. Sounds like a love-love relationship for IT departments. Don't get too carried away. So how do they get more details on Printer Care Plus? Call Copiers Northwest today, 206-282-1200, or visit copiersnw.com. Copiers Northwest. New ideas, new solutions. And now, let's look back at This Week in Technology. All right. This Week in Technology is going all the way back to February 28th, 1954. The first color television set using the NTSC standard was offered for sale to the general public. (coughs) And (coughs) that rye whiskey, buddy. This is killing me. NTSC is the standard used in most of North and South America and a few other places across the world. <laughs> CBS gave the first demonstration of color television to the general public, showing an hour of color programming daily, Monday through Saturdays, beginning January 12th, 1950, and the running of the remainder of that month over at the WOIC in Washington, D.C., This is essentially an area where they had public viewing and they had a total of eight 16 inch color receivers that the public would come to watch TV. Just think. Yeah, I remember that. You remember that? Yeah. You were around during that time? Yeah. So they would actually come together so they could watch color TV. But in June of 1954, 
RCA started to sell the CT100, and over 4,000 units were sold in the first month. With production not able to keep up with the demand, they ended up having to expand, and RCA became the standard yep. of your color we, television. Yes, we had an RCA when I was a little kid. We had an RCA also. Big, huge tube set. That, then we got a Panasonic. Oh, well, then we went to some off-brand, and it didn't work bad, and my dad kept on saying we should go back to the RCA. Well, that was This Week in Technology. Have you ever wanted to watch some Tech Time history with over two years of videos, podcasts, and blog information? You can visit us online at techtimeradio.com to watch our older shows or join the Tech Timers Facebook group to talk with us all the time live. We're going to take a commercial break. When we turn, we have Mark's Mumble Whiskey Review and our Technology Fail of the Week. We'll see you after the break. Tech Time Radio is brought to you today by Nutility, the platform that makes utility management seamless by selecting your service providers, splitting a single bill amongst roommates, and then shutting off your service when it's time for you to move out. Nutility reviews your preferences and sets up all the utilities for you. This provides you with the best local provider in your service area. It's much easier than splitting up your bills between roommates. No more late Larry not being able to get to you on time to make the payments, and no more Venmo charges or PayPal charges. One place to do your billing so that everybody pays on time. Now, how can you use this great service from Nutility, you ask? Uh Aha. Well, you can absolutely get it now and get three months for free. That's correct. If you go to Nutility.com. Again, it kind of sounds like Utility, but it's Nutility.com. Use the tech code 3. And again, that's N-U-T-I-L-I-T-I.com. Get your first three months for free using the code TECH3. The segment we've been waiting all week for, Mark's Whiskey Mumble. Ooh. All right. Well, what, what, what special day do we have today? Because it better be I throw away whiskey day because it's not very good. We'll get to that. Okay. All right. Today is car keys, small change day. Wait, I, I'm going to have to call you out on that because I got I got an email from IHOP that today is actually... Pancake Day. Oh, inter- oh, is it International Pancake Day from yeah. IHOP? So okay. there's international you get and three there's national. pancakes at IHOP. Oh, okay. Or is, or is that just so, so you're going to go to IHOP this year? I don't know. I just, I'm just letting you know that okay. I, IHOP says it's National Pancake Day. Okay. All right. Well, Mark's saying it's National Key and Change car Day. Car Keys and Small Change Day. It's not a day to celebrate car keys or small change, as the name implies. The day is actually a celebration of the place where you put those unrelated items are stored. In your pocket. So it's pocket day. So it's pocket day. It's really pocket, pocket day. day. Yes. Oh, that's I'm, glad, I'm glad that today is pocket day. <laughs> that makes me feel all... Your guys' face just dropped. Uh, <laughs> well, the, the, I'm trying to figure out what the heck... What the heck what, where do you change. find this stuff? Well, well, <laughs> the small, some, hey, listen. The small that's... opening yeah. or that pouch that forms a person's clothing is used to carry small items like car keys, small change, and whiskey bottles. Why wouldn't I celebrate oh, okay, that? There you go. Uh, Whiskey well, bottles. That's yeah, when, you, when you get on the airplane, a you have to have a couple of those in your pocket. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Although you're not supposed to take them when you fly. because the. But yeah, okay. Well, you're just outing yourself all over <laughs> the place, <laughs> aren't you? Fluorescent lights and yeah, alcohol on you're airplanes. Just, you're just... <laughs> all right, you're let's fire move on to this delicious that. whiskey. Okay. Whistle Pig Piggyback Rye, a six-year rye whiskey at 96.56 proof. So before mm-hmm. his passing... The master distiller, Dave Pickerel, had a dream of creating an aged rye specifically for cocktail use. Mm. That end result is piggyback rye, which, according to the company, is a nod to Pickerel to the love and respect he had for the bartender community. Mm. In fact, the company designed the bottle for ease of handling by bartenders, so it's really easy to pick up and pour. And its unique strength of precisely 96.56 proof is the optimal match in the strength, sweet, Bitter cocktail tri- triangle, making it the bartender's dream. Yeah, and guess. if you grab the bottle, I'm going to go and ask a bartender. <laughs> you you ask them that. They'll, right. they'll tell you that. And then Whistle Pig in return has made the bottle a nod to Dave himself. So if you grab that bottle, uh-huh. you see the traditional Whistle Pig uh-huh. on it is wearing a top hat is oh. gone. That's gone. It's replaced by a Stetson hat, oh, which was, was hat. Dave always wore. Oh, wow. And then the dates 1956 <laughs> to 2018 are on the neck wrapper, which is a nod to his birth and death dates. Yeah, I have a feeling you're death still not something. Gonna... If that's right. You got the death already got taken care of. All yeah. right. So this right. one Whistle Pig product, you do not have to. Break the bank to afford, like most whistle pig. 
Mm-hmm. It does make excellent cocktails. It brings a sweet and spicy flavor and balance with a touch of earthiness that if you're a rye lover, you will love. If you're not, then give it a thumbs down and leave me the bottle. Okay. Well, I guess you can be taking I, that I might bottle. be changing my, my stance oh, okay. on rye. All right. There you go. Okay. All right. Well, I guess now we're going to move on to, speaking of uh, whistle pig and failures, let's move on to this week's uh, technology fail. We are out of time. Congratulations. You're a failure. Oh, I failed. Did I? Yes. Did I? Yes. Did I? Yes. All right, this week's technology we fail about- <laughs> comes to us by Dish Network. Oh, poor Dish, Dish Network. Network had an extended outage, so it's brought the company down since last week. That's caused by a ransomware infection, it said in a statement. Instead of saying they got hacked, it was a ransomware infection. The outage uh, affected television they just service, caught it. They, customer they didn't wash service, their hands. Is that what happened? Sites and even the ability for customers to pay their bills. The disruption hit Thursday, February 23rd, the same day that Dish was set to release its quarterly earnings statement, which they didn't release. Uh, Dish said customer service and internal communications remain affected by the breach as certain data was extracted. Uh, the down detector users complained the television series were not able to express their ability to log in and use any of their premier contact, including Dish Answers, Dish Network Customer Service. Twitter page did respond to customers that tweeted this error having an issue by saying an internal system issue is impacting some of our customers' operation. We're sorry for the inconvenience. Guess that's Notice why the my, customers. Guess that's why my downstairs neighbor is grumpy. Uh, does your downstairs neighbor have they, dish? They have dish. Move yeah. to DirecTV. 1-800-DIRECTV will take care of your life for you. All right. Well, yeah, now. don't promote anything you don't get paid for. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to move to Mike's Mesmerizing Moment. This is Mike's Mesmerizing Moment. Presented by Story Coffee. Visit storycoffee.com. All right, Mike, I got a story for you. A sci-fi magazine has cut off submissions after a flood of AI-generated stories. The science yeah. fiction fantasy magazine Clark's World has been forced to stop accepting new submissions from writers as it was bombarded when what it said were AI-generated stories. I'm starting to feel a little like Jonah. Uh, Clark said the magazine essentially pays contributors for their work. We're being targeted by people trying to make a quick buck. He said that he had spoken to editors of other magazines that are also dealing with the same problem. There's a rise of the side hustle culture online, and some people have said that they are using a quick money way of using ChatGPT to help them out. All right, so you've mentioned concerns about this before. No, I love ChatGPT. Uh, what is your take on this? What is my take? This is just what I was talking about when we first started talking about this thing. Okay. Is that people are going to be using it for quick, rich scams. Like, you you know, the the book the the guy generated using this and and uh, got really raked over the coals because... Uh, his AI graphics weren't quite it, as it good, just, and the story well, didn't no, kind of flow. Well, no, it was just the premise behind the thing that he he sh- he put this together and sold it, and then tried to foster it as his own creation. And this is this is kind of what. So now this is affecting not only not only the content of what people are doing, but it's also affecting these these businesses' operations. And, and you're not a writer, so you wouldn't know what it's like to submit something. No. To a company and then have a denial. Have a, or have, you know, you're getting rejected. rejected, or you get, or you don't get rejected. But it's a process, and so now these now these folks have all these chat GBT things, which which uh, it's bad writing. It is. It, it's it's just not good. So does this now make you feel a little bit better, though, that you know that ChatGPT and the AI isn't really going to be taking no, these it, people's jobs? It's not about me, me, me feeling good about it. It's okay. just saying this is just saying that this is this is the, what happens when these things are offered to the market without thought of what the consequences are going to be. Okay, you know we we always do this with the whole this whole technological age is almost like a a medical laboratory that doesn't pay any attention to its its policies and procedures. So he says, oh, let's just toss in some Ebola and see what happens. All right. Okay, now let's move, though, to our pick of the day. And now our pick of the day for our whiskey tastings. Let's see what bubbles to the top. All right, Mark, what, what, what are we sipping uh, here? 
You guys are drinking the Whistle Pig Piggyback Rye, six years. How thumbs do you down. like it? Thumbs down, thumbs down, thumbs down, thumbs I'm down, thumbs down. I'm going to give it a thumbs up. Oh, wow. Can I give it a thumbs sideways? A sideways? What there's is that? No, there's no after such thing I as thumbs sideways. It, I was like, okay, this is fine. Mm, no. Mm, no. Oh, thumbs down. No. I, I, I got I gotta say, if it was based solely on my the initial burn, I would give it a thumbs down, but the finish makes it something very pleasant, actually. And all put right. it in a cocktail, that burn goes away and all the flavors come through. Yeah. Okay. How many seconds do we have left, Odie? Fifteen uh, seconds. That's enough for me to Here's tell what you. I'm gonna say. What? What are you going to tell me? People want to know more about whiskey. Matt Menis has just started on ADHD Whiskey on YouTube. Oh. Got to watch. It's a okay, must thing of go. the year. All right. Remember, the technology of tomorrow starts with the science of today. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us on Tech Time Radio. We hope that you had a chance to have that hmm moment today in technology. The fun doesn't stop there. We recommend that you go to techtimeradio.com and join our fan list. For the most important aspect of staying connected and winning some really great monthly prizes. We also have a few other ways to stay connected, including subscribing to our podcast on any podcast service from Apple to Google and everything in between. We're also on YouTube. So check us out on YouTube.com slash Tech Time Radio, all one word. We hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did making it for you. From all of us at Tech Time Radio, remember, mum's the word. Have a safe and fantastic week.